everybody, welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. After an hour of technical problems, I am so grateful to be recording here in my brand new studio um, on all new equipment, which is why it took us so long to set up. If you're a Patreon member, thank you so much for waiting for this live stream to go up. I promise you, we will have this nailed next time. <laughs> Um, let me, my guest actually needs no introduction. She was on my show with, uh, Ryan Keeley at the very beginning of this podcast back in 2017. It was like one of my first episodes. Um, she left the biz. She's back now. She's a good friend. I'm so excited to have her here. The one and only Shalana Jensen. Oh, thank you. Hi everyone. <laughs> but Hey, I, the, I think it's crazy that I'm the first one here at this new place. Because, I know. Because like we were talking about earlier, yes. I'm the first model that you ever shot on location by yourself. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So we share we share history for sure. Um, yeah. Back when I was shooting for my mom and she was like slowly allowing me to, <laughs> you know, like do more and more important shoots. I was still like a little in training. Um Jelena was my first shoot that I could go out on location. And that was very special because locations were expensive. Um, you know, it was a big deal to pack up the van and take all the equipment. It was and just a lot it more was work. on location without your mom. Yes. The first time without her. Like you yes. had you had shot with her before, but not yes. like that. Like yeah. just trusting me, like, all right, girl, you got this. <laughs> um, and that was the first time we I met. Know, which I mentioned. So I have my planner <laughs> from that year I because I was that. still in college. That's it was so my last crazy. semester of college. And so I got these August to August calendars. That's what students buy. <laughs> but I kept track of everything, like my income, my mileage for my shoots and things. <laughs> but the funny thing is I can see exactly when we shot. And our 20-year anniversary is coming up soon. Wow. So right here, I looked I looked it up today. I actually thought of this when I was in the shower. I was thinking of you in the shower today. Oh. <laughs> But it was March 11th, 2003. Oh, my God. You can see how much I got paid. That's, oh, wow. Is that all we paid you? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No, but well, even, inflation, you know. No, but even, like, you know, these days, most of the time, well, at least before I retired, like, if I shot with someone for a magazine, it wasn't guaranteed, so I wouldn't even get paid that day most mm. of the time, you know? Yeah. I like, yeah. have to wait to see if the magazine buys it. Back then... Yeah. They were like, yeah, we're for sure going to buy you, you know, yeah. buy this this set. But yeah, so you and I met on March 11th, 2003. I first shot with your mom in February. And was that a solo remember. as well? Yeah, I shot with your mom in the old studio. Oh there, I shot with your mom on February 11th. Wow, that is amazing. And that was like last week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean – and my, I shot with Scott St. James my first shoot, which was on February 7th. So last week um, on Tuesday was my 20-year anniversary of being in front of the camera. Oh, my God. So I'm legit now. Wow. <laughs> wow. So, um, so I mean, you know, we got into your history on the last episode. Yeah. I think we talked about, like, exactly how you got into the industry. So I don't think we need to get into all of that again. But um, you did you did leave us for a while. I did, <laughs> which was very sad. Cry, cry. <laughs> um, so tell us a little bit about like why you left. Um, what did you do while you were gone? Yeah. Because how could there be life without porn? I mean, like, <laughs> like how could you exist out of this world? And yeah, while you're back. So um, I actually planned on retiring first, um, my thirty fifth birthday. Mm -hmm. And I basically told everyone that I had shot with and all the companies I was shooting with um, that I was going to be leaving. And so, and my plan was on my 35th birthday because, and you know this from the old glamour days, the industry has changed a lot based on what girls look like and mm -hmm. what they're allowed to look like for shoots. Because mm -hmm. back then, your mom and people, <laughs> Stephen Hicks, you, they didn't, they would shoot with girls with tattoos, but they didn't want a lot of tattoos. There's no way they would have shot me with hair like this. Nope. <laughs> um, even nail colors. Like, I remember that we had to have French manicures or red or pink. Like, yeah. I even showed up one time to shoot with Mark Litt, and I showed up with black nails, and he freaked out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, I just got sick of having to look a certain way for so long, like, for everyone else. And I just wanted to be myself. And so um, I decided my 35th birthday, you know, I'd been um, at that point, gosh, what was that like? 
t- almost 13 years in the business. And so I thought, okay, you know, cause I never had plans to be in the business that long. Mm-hmm. Even, even I thought I was going to be in the business like a year to, to help pay off school. Yeah. But, classic, <laughs> classic Yeah. Story. And then here I am 20 years later, <laughs> made a career out of it. Um, but yeah, I, um, so I, I was going to retire and I dyed my hair and then, um, I won girls way girl of the year. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. And then I just told Girls Way, I'm not going to leave you guys hanging. So for that last year in 2017, I basically only um, I only shot for Girls Way. Mm-hmm. Um, I did uh, two hot and mean scenes for Browsers, which you shot my very last girl girl scene I ever shot before retiring. Was you shot that... me with Jenna Fox. Oh, right. What was the scenario for that one? Uh, it was in the bathtub. We were in a bathtub. Oh, yeah. That was a really nice bathtub. Yeah. It was a pain in the ass to shoot in, though. Bathtub scenes are, like, the worst. Yeah. They're really... Especially when you have, you're tall like me. Like, yeah. they're not all made for my height. So it's like trying yeah. to pose and then you're slipping on the bottom of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. have to be lotion so your skin doesn't look ashy. But then oh, yeah. Slipping everywhere. Well, my favorite is... The, actually, the last girl-girl scene I did for Twisties was in a bathtub. <laughs> and oil, too. Yeah. Uh, oil each other up in a bathtub. Yeah. And I was like... It's a recipe for disaster. It's a recipe for fucking disaster. I mean, like, thank God I have workers' comp because someone's going to break their fucking neck today. <laughs> Didn't happen. Thank God. But, yeah. Whenever I see bathtub scenes and then yeah. when I see oil in there, I'm like, oh. Like, there's even been times where I've shot them where, you know, the fans watching the scene can't tell, but I have, like, a towel yes. in, in the bottom of it totally. with my knees on, you know, so I'm not sliding everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but, yeah, so that was my last shoot. And then, um, as a lot of, well, you know for sure, but a lot of people know, I was the Twisties interviewer for yes. 12 years. Yes. <laughs> and I continued to do those after I stopped shooting with you. Right. But then one day I walked in and just told you, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> and the biggest reason was because um, I just decided I needed something else to do after doing that for so long. And so I, um, an opportunity came up for me to own, co-own a, a fitness studio um, that I went to. And so I love the studio so much. I did everything that I could to keep it open. And um, I remember when you started to get into that kind of fitness. Yeah. So I became an instructor at the, or I started training to become an instru- fitness instructor at the end of 2017, right before I retired. And then I retired, except from doing the Twisties interviews. But then I became an owner like a month after when I told you I was done because mm-hmm. it was just too hard for me to like have to be at my studio all the time, but then drive to set. And even though I wasn't there a lot, like a long time for the interviews that still took time out of my day to drive across LA yeah. and you know Dude, people don't understand going to makeup and then like I actually spent more <laughs> I'd be on camera for like 10-15 minutes but it would be yeah. six hours of my day you know and that's the thing about LA too it takes so long to get anywhere like if I have lunch plans with someone yeah. and they want to have lunch in Hollywood or something like yeah. that like that's literally my whole day yeah so um, and, and then I, so I be, I owned a fitness studio and, um, when I, when I started my only fans again, I actually did a live in the beginning to explain to everyone. Um, but if you, so if you were there and you've seen that, um, you already know this story, but, um, I, so I bought into this studio and then not long after my business partner totally screwed me over and I had to get lawyers involved and everything. And so it was already very touchy for me. And then once she was removed, and I had the studio myself. I started growing it, and it was doing amazing, and I was about to expand. We were the highest rated studio in my area, and then the pandemic hit. <laughs> and I ended up, um, I took an out about six months after the pandemic hit um, that my, because I, I had a commercial lease, you know? Oh, yeah. Like, it's, it's one thing to have a business online, like my website that I ran for so many years. It's a whole other story when you have a brick and mortar business. Mm-hmm. And so I had this big commercial lease and, you know, L.A. County was the first ones, you know, fitness was like one of the first things to be shut down. And we were shut down for so long, for like a year and a half. No one could have classes Mm -hmm. indoors. Um, I have asthma, so I was petrified to catch COVID at the time when it was really bad. I I did catch it last year, but it was Omicron. It wasn't bad at all. And I'm fine. I don't have long COVID. But before that, when no one knew what was going on, I didn't want to put myself in that position like to risk my health or my life. Right. And um, I would imagine also, too, with asthma, it's probably harder to wear a mask and work out. Yes. So right? there was a period of time that first summer in 2020 when they allowed us in July to open our doors again. And I did. But, you know, not we could only hold so many people in class. And then you're teaching online at the same time. Um, and so it was – I'm wearing a mask. And then they, they even went so far as so we had to wear gloves. 
like like latex gloves. So you're like sweating and your hands are like oh, in these God. gloves. And I'm having to talk loud enough through the mask for people to hear me that are online watching the class. And, and not only that, but like you have to demo more when you're doing virtual classes than when yeah. you're doing a class in person, when right. you walk around and help people with their form and different things. So mm -hmm. um, it was... I, I was open for like two weeks and then it was just me and one of my employees and then she ended up getting sick. It wasn't COVID, but she got sick, but we didn't know what it was and so she couldn't be there. And I was literally doing everything myself, like mm -hmm. having to clean everything myself and I'm not supposed to be inhaling all that stuff with mm -hmm. asthma. And so finally I just, I closed my doors and then they shut everyone down again anyway. And then I just told my landlord like I need out. And so thankfully he was able to give me an out. Um, and then I was just really depressed because of everything I'd gone through. Like, not just the pandemic, but everything I went through with my my business partner the year before. Mm -hmm. It was just like, it all drained me. And I yeah. already have anxiety and depression. <laughs> it just felt like the universe was, like, against you. Yeah. Like, you got into this place. You were finally, like, you know, getting into something. Because it's, like, that classic thing that people say. There's nothing, there's no other career you can do besides porn. Once you've done porn, there's yeah. no other possibility for you. Like, you could never move on and do something yeah. else. Like, I mean, it does make it difficult. Yeah. Like, I, but you had pretty much achieved that. Yeah. You know, and, you had been able to find another yeah. industry. And I didn't even use my, you know, my whole persona. Like, I kept it all separate. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, there's people who... Like, there was this one woman, she started, which I was so nice to, uh, she was actually a, a photographer who was mm -hmm. still learning stuff, but she only shot with natural light. And um, I helped her, I taught her how to do studio lighting, because for people watching who don't know my history, I went to film school, so I already know how to do a lot of stuff, you know, mm -hmm. when it comes to photography and film. And um, I let her borrow my hands of lights. I taught her how to do studio lighting. Uh, she was carrying her camera around with no lens cap in just some tote bag. I gave her a camera, expensive camera bag that I barely ever used. Like I did all these things. I was so nice to her. I taught her like Photoshop at my house, some tricks and stuff. And then she, for some reason, just started wondering like where my money came from. Mm because I wasn't really working, because I wasn't paying mm -hmm. myself through my studio, because mm -hmm. I didn't need to, and I was trying to build it up and expand, so I wasn't paying myself. Mm -hmm. um, I would get that if I was a single woman, but I'm married to a successful man who's always made more money than I even do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know why, but she started digging on me, and then she found out about my whole porn pass, and then started spreading stuff to everybody that she knew. So, like, there were women who, like, I knew through other people that had never met me that would talk shit about me and everything. So it was a struggle. So like what kind of things would she say? Um, always call me by my stage name, even okay. though she'd never met me and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, just all kinds of like, just, they would, it, it's very like catty and certain, you know. Yeah. So I, <laughs> it was just funny because one of my instructors had a daughter who was on the cheer team, like competitive mm -hmm. cheer, not a high school team or anything. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these women were in that group. And so I told her one day, I was like, well, if they're going to talk shit about me, like, I might as well just get all glammed up and wear my skimpiest dress and show up to the next meet and introduce myself to all the husbands. <laughs> By the way, JelenaJensen.com. Yeah. Just wear, like, a fucking shirt with your, with your website on it. Yeah. And it's funny because I saw something recently. I forget where I saw it. It was probably on social media, someone talking about it. Well, another girl probably. But it's like, you know. Everyone doesn't want us to do this job. You know, they tell us, oh, we're too, like, especially me, because I graduated magna cum laude and all these things. And, you know, I've done well with my business that, you know, well, we're, we shouldn't be in porn. But then it's like no one allows us to move on from it. I, I, oh, my God. I talk about this all the time. That's the most infuriating thing for me because, yeah, you'll hear a lot of that. Oh, like, oh, you know, you, um, like, get out of porn, get a real job, yeah. right? Yeah. And then people get out of porn and they try to get a real job and nobody will let them. Yeah. Like, like you're a fucking criminal mm -hmm. or something like that. Or like you, you know, um, it's just crazy to me. Yeah. And yet, meanwhile, they all watch it. Yeah, I know. Like. <laughs> it's like pointing the finger with one hand yeah. and beating off with the other. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, I wasn't hiding it from a bunch of people, but I, you know, it's, it's wasn't something that I discussed with all my clients. Of course. Because it's, you know, it's and my I'll, past. Like who goes, who goes to a client and is like, oh, by the way, these are all the jobs I've had in my past. Yeah. And that's <laughs> the thing. And it didn't apply to like what you were doing. You were yeah. teaching a fitness studio. And, and look, I also like don't agree that somebody who was ever an adult, like couldn't like take care of children. I'd like, yeah. I think that that's, you know, we're not 
sexual deviants and criminals and stuff like that. But okay, maybe like if you had to disclose that if you were going to work at a school or something like yeah. that, which I still like don't necessarily think that that's true. But yeah. you know, maybe in that case you might want to disclose that just in case like some kid finds you in the internet or yeah. something. But like with a fitness studio, like why does that matter? Yeah. So so then after I'd lost my studio mm -hmm. and I was super depressed. <laughs> I literally was like couch locked and I didn't go anywhere because of COVID and everything too. Um, so I had one of my instructors still like teaching all the classes because I got to the point where I was like, I want to make sure that you're getting paid. So I'll just let you teach all the online classes. And so um, I would just like sit on the couch, make sure everything was running, which I will, I do have to say, I was telling my husband, it's hilarious that my life went full circle. <laughs> I had a content site with online videos for fitness <laughs> and I was doing live virtual classes, which is webcaming. Yeah. That's so I'm like, true. I'm running a content site again. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess it's what I was meant to do. Yes. <laughs> um, so then um, because of um, the pandemic, my good friend Maggie Green, who's uh, another performer in the business, um, she lives in Florida. So whenever she comes to LA to shoot, she stays with me mm -hmm. so we can hang out. And I have dogs. She's she's just like me. No kids, mm -hmm. just dogs. So um, Amazing, huge tits. <laughs> yeah. I mean, let's not leave that part out. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so she always stays with me. And so she came to the house and I was just telling her like how bummed I was that, you know, I was really proud that I bought my studio with my own savings, mm -hmm. not mine and my husband's savings my money mm -hmm. from the adult business. And I lost it all because I hadn't had my studio that long. So she was like, girl, you got to get your OnlyFans started up again. And she told me how much money she was making because when I left the business, I had an OnlyFans and it was not making anywhere near what OnlyFans makes now. <laughs> nope. I remember I signed up for OnlyFans when it started too, yeah. just because I didn't want someone else to take my name. Yeah. But I like literally didn't pay any attention and I made maybe $24 a month. I made like 100 to $200 a month. I actually used it more like social media at the time because I had mm -hmm. my website that I still um, put all my content on. So I used that more as a way to like see my day-to-day -day life mm -hmm. and to see more personal stuff. But I still only made like, you know, $100, $200 yeah. a month. Um, nothing like what OnlyFans does now. Right. And so I – started thinking about it and stuff. And I was like, hmm, maybe I should get back into it. Like, why not? You know? Mm -hmm. And for me, it also, I didn't say earlier too. Um, one of the things of what I got kind of sick of <laughs> why I quit as well in the business and retired is because I got very pigeonholed in the MILF role, like the stepmom role. Yeah. And I don't mind like being a MILF, but because I only shoot girl girl for other companies, like I was always booked with young girls and just once you start to get older, like, I had nothing in common with them. Like, I'd sit on set with them, and, like, we had nothing to talk about. <laughs> and I just kind of felt a little creeped out. Like, I remember you saying, and it was the same model that I had worked with that made you feel the same way. But you had said that you would feel old when girls were in the business the year that you graduated high school. Yeah. The same girl who you first worked with like that, I worked with. And when we were on set before we started shooting our scene, she told me she was still in high school. Even though she was 18, she was still in high school. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I just didn't want to have to shoot, like, all that stuff anymore. Yeah. So that's why the last year, um, you know, and, and Girl's Way, like, and I know there's a lot of fans, but, like, I actually, now that I'm back to shooting Girl Girl, which I just started mm -hmm. two months ago, um, I waited for monkey pox and <laughs> – COVID and all that stuff to get under control. Don't, don't forget. Oh, wait. No, you weren't around. We had the uh, ringworm. No, I wasn't. Oh, that was that. fun. I didn't even know. Because everybody that. kept getting it. There was like one mystery <laughs> porno couch out there that like had ringworm living on it. And people were getting it from like we all knew there was this right. one fucking couch. And everyone had their theory of like what couch yeah. that was. But like nobody knew for sure. And people just kept getting oh. ringworm and then like giving it to each other. And then it was just like. And it's yeah. so contagious mm -hmm. and it's contagious in a way too that I could get it just yeah. picking up clothes mm -hmm. or like, you know, like throws or whatever that I bring yeah. on set bedding. Um, so yeah, that was the, yeah, the ring wearing academic was, <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Yeah. So like all these things happened. Like I felt like COVID finally got under control and I was venturing out and going on vacation and seeing friends and then monkey pox pops up and I was like, well, maybe I'm not going to shoot girl girl just yet. Yeah. <laughs> so I, um, I waited, but my thing now is why I am not really shooting for other companies and stuff um, is because I 
don't want to be stuck shooting these things that make me feel un- kind of uncomfortable. Yeah. Like, it's funny because fans would be like, oh, you were so into it. But it's like, no, I'm just a good actress. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, I um not to ruin anyone's fantasy, but it's That's just what we're here to do. But <laughs> Holly right? Randall and Sildred is here to ruin your porn fantasy. That is right? literally the mission of my show. <laughs> like, Spell all the myths, ruin your fantasy. That's what we're here for. Yeah. Sorry. This is where you get the truth. It's the truth. <laughs> It's ugly. <laughs> but yeah, so like um, now that I'm shooting Girl Girl again, like even when I posted on my Twitter asking fans like – because there's a lot of new girls in the business mm-hmm. that I don't know. Um, but I – you know, ones that have big natural boobs. Like that's what my fans like obviously because mm-hmm. I have them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so, you know, I was asking for like who do you guys want to see me shoot with? But I was very clear in saying I want to shoot with women – in their 30s, 40s, you know, mm-hmm. 50s. Like, I'm 41. I want to shoot with women around my own age. Mm-hmm. Like, women. Yeah. Because yeah, I'm yeah. going to enjoy it more. And I just also look at it like, don't you want to get, like, my best performance, yeah. you know? And, like, me really be, be into the scene. Mm-hmm. Then, you know, me shooting with someone that, like, I'm creeped out with, like, yeah, the, the storyline or whatever, you know? Yeah. Like, so, and I don't know if part of it is, too, a lot of my friends have kids now and stuff. And I'm just like, oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be, like, the creepy stepmom. <laughs> So, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so that was like my whole return and I am only shooting for my fan sites. Um, I, I don't know if I'll work for other companies right now or not. Mm-hmm. Um, it just, I just have to kind of play it by ear and see. Um, but the nice thing, that's what I like. I think a lot of us girls, like I know fans sometimes complain about a lot of us girls not wanting to do anything but our own content now. But a lot of people also have to realize I come from that. Mm-hmm. Like, I ran my own site myself for mm-hmm. so long and that was the majority of my like my income and stuff yeah. like I've always been in control of my career I'm not like the typical porn star mm-hmm. like you know I've done things my own way um and I mean thankfully I'm in a position and stuff where I don't need I get I get that some you know performers in the business have to work for other companies mm-hmm. I don't have to so I mean I'm I really got back into um to to make up the money that I lost, yeah, you know, to replenish my savings. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So I don't need it. Like, I don't need to shoot to survive day to day. Right, right. So I'm thankfully in that position. And so I can pick and choose, yeah. you know. So, um, but I've always kind of been like that. Like, I want to be in charge of my career and work who for who I want to or with who I want to. Yeah. And so, you know, a lot of people say, oh, it's, it's great that OnlyFans is here now. Girls have, like, the power in their hands. But I kind of always already had that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but that's why it's so appealing to me. It's like, oh, I can just start my OnlyFans and then I can just shoot what I want to shoot and yeah. with who I want to shoot with. Yeah. And that's what's fun is, like, I've been getting to shoot now with women in the business that are either favorites of mine mm-hmm. or that I've never shot with before. Yeah. You know, because no one booked us together. Right. Especially women my own age. I got stuck shooting with so many young girls. Yeah. I never got to work with people my own age. You yeah. Know? Yeah. No, I understand. All right, guys. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and then we're going to come back, and we're going to talk about what's different in the industry now versus when she left, and what are Jelena's goals for the future. All right. Hang tight. We'll be right back. Hey, guys. If you want to support my show, then you should think about joining my Patreon. At my Patreon, I offer all kinds of amazing perks in exchange for your financial support. From live streams of my interviews as they are happening, to bonus Q&As, behind the scenes photos and videos of my shoots, plus cool merch like stickers, mugs, and hoodies, we have you covered. So go to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered, and while you're at it, make sure that you click that subscribe button so you don't miss a single one of my new updates. All right, everybody, we are back. So, I mean, the industry has changed dramatically, obviously. Um, I always talk about big industry changes because I've been in it for so long. But you had that unique perspective of leaving for a while and then coming back. So what do you see as some of the biggest changes? And maybe is there some good and some bad, or is it all good? Well, I can only talk on or speak on what I have been kind of exposed to with, like, the people I've shot Mm -hmm. with. I. I mean, I, even though I'm back, I'm still not in the thick of it. You know, Mm -hmm. I'm not going to sets and working with everybody. Mm -hmm. Like, literally, Dean Capture shoots almost all my stuff, except for my self-shot stuff. Yeah, so same. He's literally, yeah. Him and my husband are the only people that I let shoot me. Yeah, and so I, um, for me, it's like, I'm not exposed to a lot. You Mm -hmm. know, like, Dean's really, like, my Mm -hmm. info person, and I've known him for so long. Like, I, 
I've I was the fifth Twisties treat ever. That's wow. when I first met him. So he shot me back in 2005 <laughs> for the first time. So I've n- known Dean a long time, too. We have been – we are so old. We're old. We are so we're, old. We're gilfs in this business. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but – no, I, I even told you one one time when – or when I first saw your uh, – that you were shooting for your OnlyFans yeah. when I text you and I was like – it makes me feel better because I'm not the only one still here out of our group of friends from back in the day, like our little know, glamour group, like no one is around. I know. <laughs> it's just that's me so, and you. That's so true. And then I like spent my life saying I would never get naked in front of a camera. And then you can, I've learned that. Never say I never. Am. Yeah. Never say never. You never know what's going to happen. I mean, I'm still saying that I'll never shoot porn, but I don't know. Maybe I should also not say that. <laughs> 10 years later, I'm like doing a fucking 10 guy blow bang. I'm like, ah, I join my only hand. Hey, if they pay enough for I it. mean, I'd be fucking, <laughs> I'd be really good at it. Just saying. I love it. Um, yeah, so I, uh, for me, I don't, I think it's just very different in the t- sense of like how many performers there are. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the, the whole like tattoos and things like is so different. Um, yeah, because before it was like. So it's so funny because I got sent a girl from Mark Spiegler. Like this was actually like maybe a year ago. And it, and like the big headline was no tattoos. Yeah. And I was like, wow. Because back in the day it was like, if you had tattoos, yeah. like it was really hard for you to get work. Now just everyone has tattoos. So I think like brands have just accepted yeah. it and it's whatever. But the fact that this girl had no tattoos, that was like the selling yeah. point. Like that, it was that big of a deal. Yeah. And that's actually like when I, like I wanted to get tattoos for a long time. Like out of all my siblings, like I'm the oldest and like they all had tattoos way before me Mm. and I was the last one to get tattooed. Um, And it it was me waiting so long because I got so much work back then because Mm -hmm. I had no tattoos. Being all natural, no tattoos, like you can fit any role. That's what Mm -hmm. I would tell people, you know? And I mean, and and going off that too, one thing I noticed that is a little upsetting to me is just like back in the day, I, you know, I worked for Playboy a lot. I was a Playboy model and I worked on a lot of Playboy TV shows. And there was a point where they basically pushed me out because I was too hardcore for them, even though I wasn't even shooting hardcore. And now it's... I know exactly what you're talking about. (laughs) And now I'm like, wow, every porn star who, like, does DP and everything can be a Playboy model. And I was, like, so shunned back in the day for spreading, opening my legs, doing penthouse style. I wasn't even shooting girl, girl. Yeah, I was was shunned as a photographer Mm -hmm. for having shot porn. Yeah. And then shooting... I actually had an incident once where I shot a Playboy Playmate um and the shoot went great everything came out fine and you know of course like I don't talk about porn in front of like people that I know are not like I know they don't want to hear about it Mm -hmm. so if I had I shot a lot of fashion models and stuff like that and quasi celebrities sometimes um and yeah and this girl was a playmate and so I like never mentioned it you know we never talked about it It was just super professional and she found out later that I what I did and she actually contacted Playboy and she specifically told them she said um please don't ever book me with Holly Randall again. It's not wow. good for my career. She said, to be clear, she was super professional. Um, the day went great. It's nothing personal against her. I enjoyed working with her, but it's not good for my career. Yeah, it's the stigma. I was like, wow. What stigma? Wow. Yeah. No, it's messed up. Though I appreciate that she went out of her way to make sure that they knew that, like, I didn't actually do anything yeah. inappropriate, but the fact that, like, my name was Yeah, just because it was adult, attached, yeah. Yeah. And so that's the only thing, like, now, like, I see, like, I have a good friend who handles a lot of stuff for Playboy um, who's not in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I just see all her posts and stuff, and I'm like, wow. Like, I I don't know. I I sound like a bitter old woman now, but. It's okay. You're in good company. (laughs) I'm also a bitter old woman. I feel like a bitter old woman, but, like. You know, I just feel like I was so screwed over with so many, like I've had a successful career in this business, but there are so many things that happened. Like you, that first shoot we did together was supposed to be my penthouse layout. Yes. And then that's when the magazine went bankrupt and then they didn't buy the set after we had shot it. I remember being so devastated about that. I was too. (laughs) I was like, it was a beautiful shoot. Like Mm -hmm. literally there was nothing, like I was like, this looks, and they didn't, I was so sad. Because it meant a lot to be in penthouse. 
back then. Yeah. And so, and that was my thing is your mom, like she shot me the one time and mm -hmm. said, I'm booking you next month. You're going to be my daughter's first penthouse layout. Mm -hmm. You're my first daughter, my daughter's first penthouse pet layout. And so I was excited, brand new in the business. I'm going to mm -hmm. get to be a pet. And then I actually didn't get made a pet. Well, and here's what's messed up though about this whole thing. In 2005, I was on a big um, penthouse shoot with Brett Barony for two days. And I, and it's funny because like everything full circle like later, but um, Stills by Alan, who mm -hmm. shot a lot of the, my Girls mm -hmm. Way features and all my content there. That was his first adult shoot he'd ever been on. Oh, wow. <laughs> was with me for Penthouse. But because I was working at Playboy so much and it was already hard for me to get work there because of, I was shooting more explicit mm -hmm. stuff than Playboy. I actually had to ask them not to make me a pet in 2005 so I wouldn't lose all my work at Playboy. Wow. And that's why I'm saying like I'm very bitter about stuff because yeah. I turned down things to keep my job at Playboy. And then now I see all these girls doing way worse than I did, yeah. ever did, even to this day doing worse than I've ever did. Yeah. And they're all made, you know, they get these titles and stuff. And yeah. so I don't know, like the, the bitterness in me, I just feel like, you know, the timing I, is just off. Well, timing off on everything. Like yeah. I had a fleshlight. I, a lot of people don't know this. I did all my fleshlight molds. I went to Texas. They, they, shot me here in LA. I went to Texas. They shot me two days. They did everything. I have two of my prototypes at my house and then they never released it. Mm -hmm. And so I just had a lot of things in my career. Like just, I always say like, I feel like I'm the girl who never belonged in this business. Mm -hmm. It's, it's just like, I'm always like not at the right time for things. Yeah. So that's, I mean, at least I've always been successful doing my own thing and knowing yeah. I had to rely on myself. Um, but that's also why now I'm, you know, fans like tell me, I wish that you, you know, dye your hair back. I like it black. And it's like, I'm not here to look like what you want me to look like yeah. because I did that for so long and I had to appease everyone, you know, like. And you still like didn't get. The and I still didn't you, get all the things yeah. that I worked so hard for. Yeah. So, I mean, I was even banned from Penthouse for so long because at the time my husband worked with, you know, in, in the industry and stuff and behind the scenes and, um, the owner of Penthouse at the time said, well, he didn't send him enough traffic. So I was, I had no chance at making pet of the year that year. Hmm. Is this, is this, this is the person who I think it is, yeah. right? Yeah. I, I also, can't stand him. I also got blacklisted. <laughs> yeah. From, um, and as soon as, as, but that was my fault. Cause I got drunk and I went on the <laughs> forums and I said that all their <laughs> shit looked awful. Well, see, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. I, I didn't. And then I they called my mother. <laughs> Okay, this is so embarrassing. Your mom called? Yeah, I was like in my late twenties, and my mom got a call from Penthouse, basically saying like your daughter went on the forum and like talked all this shit, and so like yeah, I was blacklisted for like eight, nine years. Yeah, I was the but whole. That was totally my fault. No, okay. see, for me it wasn't, and I you know showed up and did my jobs and mm -hmm. did my job and stuff. Um, but you know, and then the frustrating thing was everyone at the magazine that I'm I'm still friends with people who used to work there that don't work there anymore. Yeah. Um, there were editors and stuff and they all told me that he's the one who said that I was banned and, yeah. and I confronted him about it and he actually lied to my face and yeah. told me he never said that. Yeah. And then once he sold the magazine, um, cause at Penthouse and Danny's, they owned Danny.com at the time and I used to yeah. work for Danny so much. I was banned from there too. And as soon as he sold the company, I got a phone call and they said, we can book you again. <laughs> and I literally did nothing wrong. Like it was just stupid industry politics, politics. Yeah. and so um that's why I'm just like a little bitter at certain things like even now I see girls who don't have as big of a name as me and they have flashlights and stuff and I'm like why was mine never released like you know like just I, I spent all that time and didn't get paid for any of my time I yeah. shot three days three three days and didn't get paid anything for it because it was supposed to be per the sales off of my flashlights and, and so. they never gave you an explanation they just never released it. But like I said, I have two at my house. They're not textured on the inside, but I'm thinking about um, auctioning them off. <laughs> I mean, why not? Because they have my signature on them and everything. They, they're they literal. Like, I was there the same day that Jessica Drake. Like, she can she can vouch. back me up and yeah. vouch. Like, we were there at the same time in Texas doing yeah. all of our stuff for it. Yeah. So, you know, it just – that's why, like, you know, a lot of people think, like, oh, this business is so great and, like, it's so glamorous and stuff. But there's a lot of stuff, like – I, I've just had to suck up and deal with that. It's yeah. not fair. Like I didn't do anything for these things to be held against me, you know? Yeah. So, so it must feel nice then to come into the industry now and know that like you can be your own boss and you really can create your own content and you don't have to be subject to any brands flip flop decisions or like some fucking owner who decided that your husband didn't send enough traffic. Yeah. You know, all of like these stupid arbitrary shit, mm -hmm. like you can control your own career. You can make your own content and yeah. you can, you can make out well financially. It's just, yeah. and it's interesting too, to see how brands treat 
performers differently now, I do have to say. They do. And that's one thing I was like, going to say so about, the, about the changes, yeah, is that, you know, girls now don't have to rely on shooting for companies. Yeah. And if it's not the amount of money they, they want to go to work for, they can turn it down because yeah. they don't need the money. Yeah. You know, um, so that's like me. Like, I'm not shooting for other companies because they don't need the money. Yeah. And so, um, you know, and fans even recently, they keep asking for me to shoot, like, girlfriends films and places, you know, that I was so known to shoot with. But for me, it's also, too, like, I'm very organized on set. You you know me. Yeah. Like, this and, is why we, we get along. Yeah. So well. And so. I love the fact that you had a planner and that you brought it. And, like, you. <laughs> I, just, I was actually, th- for some rude reason, I was thinking about this last night. I was like organized people like that is like my favorite i just love people who are organized yeah. like when people send like that's you know what it was it was because you sent me like a dropbox link <laughs> with like pictures of yourself and i was just like when i book people for the podcast a lot of times i don't get yeah a lot of information and like you sent me all the things i needed yeah. and i just that just makes me happy. well yeah and i mean but that's being professional right yeah. so but for um for me like it's nice not having to go to set and sit on set all day. I mean, yeah. there's been times where when I worked on features, oh god, I like one time I should shot for Digital Playground and I got there at 11 a.m. and I didn't start shooting until 11 p.m. Yeah, Digital Playground shoots were notoriously long. Even when I shot for them and I tried to be so, so like really good about that and I really try to like organize scenes so that like people are there for the least amount of time and be a time efficient. I still like, dude, those days were nuts. They yeah, were so and long. and the thing is, when I was younger, it's fine. But now, like I try to explain to fans, like. I have a life outside of this. Like, yeah. I didn't come back to be full time performer again. Yeah. So I, you know, I shoot usually with Dean once a month. Mm-hmm. I've been storing content because I've always loved to be like years ahead on content. Yes. I actually have almost all my content shot for this year already. Yes. I shot this year's Christmas update last year. <laughs> <laughs> and so I have like tons of content stored yeah. and that's why now I'm focusing on my girl girl because I have all my a lot of solo just stored it's already edited and in my Dropbox and waiting yeah um all different hair colors like I barely even shot with my rainbow hair now <laughs> but yeah so I like the industry's changed in the sense that it's put you know the power in, into performers hands and then on the flip side like you're saying companies now knew that they had to step up and and act differently mm-hmm. or pay differently because You know, girls aren't just like, like for me, like when I used to work for Playboy back in the day, they paid you shit. (laughs) They would shoot like three sets of you in the day, pay you out almost absolutely nothing for it. Run those in all different magazines all the time. Mm -hmm. You never got, you know, there's no royalties or residuals Mm -hmm. in this industry. And, but you don't turn it down because there were a hundred girls behind you in line. Yeah. And you want the, you know, exposure and to have the title of being a Playboy model. And so that's what I would tell people what it used to be like. And now, you know, I don't feel like it's, it's like that. But then the industry is so saturated now. It's so easy for them. I mean, I just think the pandemic really, people being stuck at home and everything, um, you know, just only fans blew up and now everyone wants to be a performer. But I still laugh. Like I saw someone I've never seen. I, I've never heard of their name and I've been in the industry for 20 years. And, and then at the top it said like legend. And I was like, please, <laughs> <laughs> if I don't know your name, no. <laughs> I mean, it's all marketing. Like right? we've always said, like people call themselves porn stars, but yeah. how many are actual like have star status? You yeah. Know? There's been an interesting co- yeah, conversation too between like who there was, there were some issues with STD testing going around because there's porn stars. Right. And what exactly does that mean? Does that mean that like, you shot for brands and yeah. you have like your name out there and all those big sites. And then there's content, content creators, creators, right? And those are people who have never shot for big brands. And then because people who grew up shooting for, you know, big companies knew about like the testing system. You get mm-hmm. tested every two weeks. You yep. do all this. And we and know then, how to take care of ourselves and, and we're then, careful in our personal right. lives. And then you also and... have a producer who's there like myself yeah. who checks everybody's tests, make sure everybody's like legit before the scene even starts. So you have like a third party and now mm-hmm. it's like, I guess people are shooting with each other and they're not testing they're not and testing. they're not checking each other's tests. And so, you know, somebody who works for like the brands, like a porn star, I guess we'll call them, will work with a content creator. They won't like show each other's tests. I guess the one person assumes the other person has, the other person doesn't know about testing or whatever. And then you have and the problem that we've get had it lately. from yeah. them and then they go and they give it to the Everybody. porn star pool. So it's yeah. like, I've been watching a lot of this discussion on Twitter about, like, how to deal with that. I've seen some, too. And, like I said, when I – because I just started shooting Girl Girl, when I even posted about, like, Mm -hmm. oh, who are some, you know, performers you want to see me work with, I had a lot of content creators, like, hitting me up. Yeah. And I'm, like, I'm – it's nothing like me being bougie or something. It's just that 
I need to make sure that my health and everything is fine and the, and I have to trust the people I'm working with. So that's why I'm really only, and especially since I've been gone for so long, like I'm not out of like performers to work with. Like yeah, I have, yeah. I are, as soon as I started working again, like I'm already booked up with like girl, girl shoots into like April. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, just cause of all like the ladies that, you know, I'm friends with and I haven't yeah. shot with in so long and yeah. we want to shoot together. So I'm trying not to do too many cause I, can't release it all you know yeah, right yeah, now yeah. I'm just, yeah. you know storing content and stuff so um but yeah I, I I don't know like it's it seems more risky to me right now because of all that stuff yeah. like I never felt like there was such a problem yeah. in the business before because we were all so professional about it yeah and it was a small yeah group and it was community. a small yeah. it was a small group but like that's why I said like it seems like there's so many now yeah. especially with the way Twitter is with their like main feed now you get all these People you're not following, their their yeah. tweets show up in in your feed. And so I'm seeing all these people that I don't know who the hell they are, but I see their posts and things, and I'm just like, wow, like, you guys. And the problem is, too, is that, like, the past system has, like, compl- like, everyone's pulled out of the past system. So the past system, for those of you who don't know, is a system where you get tested at, like, a certain testing facility, and your results are posted in the past system. And if you have a login, like, as a producer, yeah. I have a login, I put in someone's name, I can see – if their test is clean or not. Yeah, it just like, gives it a clear or not if yeah. like, all their stuff's good. So, yeah. and, and, it, and it still protects privacy because it doesn't show which, if someone what? does have a caught in test, STD, it STD, doesn't it doesn't say, say which one. Yeah. yeah, so no, it was it was great. So that's why for me, I'm only shooting with people that like I personally know and yeah. that I'm comfortable with. Like I did my first scene back, of course, with my wifey who I was mm-hmm. with on this show last, yes. <laughs> Brian Keeley. Brian Keeley. And then... um. And which I'll be shooting with a lot Mm because we are good friends and we look good together with the same Mm -hmm. height and everything. So we look good on camera together. Um, I just shot with Siri Dahl. Mm -hmm. Um, I shot with Aaliyah Love. Mm -hmm. And then I have shoots coming up with Nicole Aniston, with Julia Ann, with Tanya Tate, with Dana Vespoli. So I have a lot of good stuff on the way. Yeah. Yeah, Those are all great girls. Yeah. Like I just want to work with my friends. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And you know what? You're in a place now that you have the freedom to do that. Yeah. And I feel like that. Like you... 20 years in the business like that's a long time I am in the hall of fame which I was so mad that they didn't give it to me before I retired because I was like oh great what does it feel like (laughs) to be in the hall of fame um it was nice because I felt like for a long time I wouldn't get anything just (laughs) because I know what's it like because I wouldn't know (laughs) well start start complaining to them but I saw some girls oh I complain yeah I don't complain to them I just I bring it up sometimes on the show and I act bitter about it but it's (laughs) Fine. Well, I was a little bitter about it too because um, at first I thought they weren't just they weren't going to give it to me because I only shot girl girl mm-hmm. like I shoot boy girl but it's just with my husband yes. for all the content I own I don't yes. shoot for co- we don't shoot together for companies or anything it's yeah. not his it, he has no desire to do that yeah but we um <laughs> I'm watching you do that and like my ADD I'm like squirrel sorry <laughs> she's messing with sorry, her nails I- I'm like. <laughs> I made a terrible error of putting fake press on nails this morning because my nails look awful and I like there's glue everywhere. I put like look there's so much longer on this hand than this hand because I got it all. I'm a disaster. Sorry. I, yeah, I do have ADHD and I was like squirrel. I, the older I've gotten, the worse it's gotten. So if I seem spacey, guys, that's why. <laughs> but um, no, and I I just thought okay, I'm not gonna get it because I'm not like a girl girl performer. We don't get put in as many features and things, yeah. so whatever, I get it. But then they put in someone who hadn't been in the business as long as me and did not have as many accolades as I had, and I was like, okay, what the hell? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I kind of took it personally too because like I've presented awards at XBiz all the time, but AVN's never once asked me to present an award. Like they, I felt kind of shunned from by them. So, but then of course after I retire. I'm at my fitness studio and because I still have my website up, my, my webmaster sends me a text and is just like, congratulations. And I was literally about to teach a class and I'm like, what, what are you talking about? And, he, and they're like, oh, you, you got in the Hall of Fame. And I was like, well, great. I'm not going to the show. <laughs> so and it took like two years for me to finally get my award. <laughs> so I have it at home. But yeah, I mean, it's nice to be recognized. Mm-hmm. But yeah. yeah, especially when you put that's what I'm saying. Like when you put that much time because they're. You know, there's not a lot of girls who last that long in the business. This is true. This is true. So. Well, it's lovely to have you back. Aww, it's been so you. good to catch up. Yes. And um, can you tell everybody where they can find you online? Yeah. So I have a new Twitter. <laughs> or I mean, I have a new Instagram. My Twitter is at Jelena Jensen. I've had it forever. Um, I have a new Instagram. It's official Jelena Jensen. And be careful because... 
I know I wanted to get into this, but we got off on all kinds so of tangents. So many fucking, and also so many yes. fucking technical There's issues. There's been a lot of technical issues, but like, um, I'll have lost, to come back on and we'll have a whole conversation about this. We have lost like an hour, and I'm very sorry. It's okay. Because <laughs> I know we have more to talk about. Yeah. I'm just like. But um, I'm one of the top used girls. I'm just going to make this really short. I'm one of the top used girls for catfishing, and um, I have been for years. And it's really, it's it's very bad. They, I, I shot 15 years of candid photos and, you know, webcam shows and especially with how AI is now, like mm-hmm. they can do, make whatever they want online. Mm-hmm. And so guys just don't believe me when I tell them that they're not talking to me. Yeah. And so, um, I have a lot of, a lot of fake accounts and Instagram will not take them down. So make sure you follow the right one because <laughs> it's official Jelena Jensen, um, without anything after it. One of the scammers put my same name with an underscore at the end. And because the name's so long, you can't see it when it shows up. So make sure it's the right account. Yeah. You'll be able to tell. Like, I'll po- I'm going to get more active on social media. I actually haven't because I was completely out of everything mm-hmm. for so long. And on the down low, I hate social media. <laughs> I absolutely hate it. And I was so happy to be away from it. Um, but, yeah, find me on there. You'll be able to see all the new things that I have coming out and um, see all the hot girls I'm going to shoot with. Yeah. And you guys can find me at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter, um, hollyrandall.com for my photo shoots that I do, and uh, patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered to support the show. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you so much (laughs) for hanging out through all the technical Uh, issues. We're going to get this shit sorted out. I'm the best person to have here on set because I went to film school and I know how tech works. you know how it works. It's horrible. (laughs) Yes, yes. Yet we we very much need it in our lives. So yeah. Thank you guys so much for joining us and I'll see you next week.